spirits together tonight, Lord. We put our minds together, my God, tonight in one accord. We put aside all that's not you, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Help me tonight, God. Help us not to be silent.
Many would be the afflictions of the righteous. But God, you promised to deliver them out of them all. You said that you would hear the official fervent prayer of the righteous. God, help me to put my heart in prayer. Help me to put my all in prayer. Help me to put my God, my everything, crying out to you tonight, mighty God. Oh, Lord, you said in the day we seek you with our whole hearts. You promised, Lord, that we, we would be found of you. God, we need you to return back the bomb of Gilead. We need you to return back the power back to the church. We need you, my God, to move, Lord, for your men and your women, my God, and lift up a stand, Lord. God, you said you would lift up a standard against the enemy. God, we know, mighty God. God, where there's two or three gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. My God, if we're with you, pray. If we're with you, mighty God, Lord, seeking you, God, and in the sea, and who can be against us? God, Lord, help us tonight. We want to be more than conquerors through prayer. Help us tonight, my God, to gird upon, gird up, Lord, our loins, and gird up in the spirit. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, and round hold, Lord, to the horns of the altar tonight, Lord. God, don't let me be denied, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We need you, Lord. God, we gotta have your touch. We gotta have your power. We gotta have your oil, Lord. God, help us tonight, Lord. Fill our vessels. Fill our oil, my God, our lamps with oil. Fill our lives, mighty God. God, I know this is what the devil This calling out of you, Lord. But God, we thank you that you have not taken away the candles. But God, you have the, my God, the candlestick yet before us, even in this local body, in this church. Help me to fight, Lord. Help me to labor, Lord. Help me, my God, to cry out of you, Lord. God, you said the poor man cried. God, help us to cry, Lord. God, we're not just crying just out of a religious. We're crying in faith. We're reaching out in faith. We're reaching out, my God, Lord, because we know, Lord, that you're more than able. In the name of Jesus, help us tonight. Help us tonight, God. Oh, I can, we feel your presence tonight, God. We feel you, Lord, you're trying to go past God, the outer courts, that heart. You're trying to, my God, dig into that center, Lord. You're trying to break up our rounds, Lord, and get to the center of our lives, the center of our hearts, the center, my God, of our beings, Lord. Help me, Lord, to yield, Lord. Help me, my God, to yield my members, Lord. God, help me, God, to give over to you. God, you should get closer to us in the clothes of our backs. God, you waited for your people to turn back to you, Lord. God, even when Hezekiah received, Lord, the, the, my God, the, the, the bad news, Lord, he turned his face to the wall, Lord, and God, he, he moved you, Lord. God, and these others, God, they, God, they, 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 they fought with you, Lord, and my God, you, they moved you, Lord. God, help us tonight, Lord, in our situations, mighty God, and the ones for the ones around us to help us to touch you and move you tonight, Lord. We need you to, we need to untie your hands, mighty God. Help us, mighty God, to do our 
hard life. Help us to do what, it, what, our, what we're supposed to be doing on God, in the name of Jesus. God, you said this. My God, the race is not given to the... My God, the, the swift and the strong, Lord, but... God, the race is given to them that can pray that they endure unto the end. God, we realize it's going to take praying, Lord, to endure. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and those, Lord, have tuned in to with us online, Lord. God, we pray, Lord, we touch, we agree with them. Them that are listening, my God, by way of internet, Lord. God, that are praying right along with us. God, in the name of Jesus, heal, Lord, the ones that need healing. The ones that need touch, my God. The ones, my God, that, my God, might be battling a spirit of infirmity. We plead the blood of Jesus and we send your word, Lord. We send your stripes of healing, Lord, across these airways, mighty God. Lift up a standard, mighty God, Lord, for them, Lord, mighty God, that in, in situations that need for you to be, for you to work things out, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, move, Lord. Break yokes, Lord. God, drive the enemy back out of their homes. Drive the enemy back in the name of Jesus. Out of their, my God, their family. God, drive, Lord, and move and push back, mighty God. God, all of the enemies trying to do, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we send your word, Lord, of deliverance. We send your word, Lord, of healing and restoration. God, touch the ones that are listening. God, we agree with them, my God. Lord, we agree with them, Lord. Touch, my God, and reverse that which the enemy, Lord, has tried to do, Lord. Reverse, my God, that which the enemy has tried to inflict, in them, my God, upon them and upon their bodies, Lord. Upon their minds, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we touch and we agree. For victory, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Find the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God, the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah. Find the clue. Sing it with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, find the glory. Revive us again. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Talk to you a few minutes. You know, I'm thankful that we are keeping this chain of prayer going. It helps. It helps. And more than you can ever imagine. And uh, I got a a few things I want to talk to you in the scriptures about and maybe uh, just uh, help prepare us for the uh, weekend. But if you have your Bibles, thank you, brother. If you have your Bibles, I want you to get ready. Turn with us here in the free scriptures. Over in the book of Daniel. Over in the book of Daniel, chapter 10. And a 
going to start at verse 1 here in just a moment. Lord, bless this word. Let it give us the, some inspiration, revelation, insight. Give us some insight of what's going on in the spiritual realm so we can understand the natural side of it. Oh, Father, we love you. Thank you for this prayer tonight. Those that press their way to be a part of it. Those, Lord, that pray and seek in their homes, in their places of dedication. Smile upon us and give us the divine grace and mercy. Touch us while we're praying. Break, heal it in the physical body. Drive out every opposing force. Whether it's in the spiritual realm or the emotional or the physical or the financial. Make us whole. Wonderful Savior in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I want to, um, I'll tell you what, let's go to um, the book of Ephesians first, chapter 6. And uh, we'll start at verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm not going to be wrong at all, but we'll start at verse 10. Finally, my brother, uh -huh. be strong in the Lord. Finally, if it's the last thing you do, be strong in the Lord. That's what I was on. Uh, when we are, uh, uh, I suppose what they call it, celebration, when someone leaves this earth body and goes to heaven. A sister, Mother Williams, that was with us, you know, on uh, different occasions. She was a blessing to us. And uh, when uh, she just had a few hours left, just a few hours left, I was explaining to her, you know, people like to, I mean, when someone did it to meet God, you don't go around and uh, pass things up with folks. You just hear the plain truth. And you let folks know, look, if God don't raise you up, you about ready to meet him. And and on and prepare yourself to meet him. Search your heart, search your spirit, search your mind, search everything in you. Because when we have to stand before him, nothing is that's covered, everything that's covered is going to be uncovered. Everything that's done in the dark is going to be brought to light. So I was telling her, I said, prepare yourself to meet God. And I was letting her know I'm giving you scriptures. I give you scriptures where the Bible says that um, his word, you're clean through the word. And I said, the word that we have given you has been the word of God. And that word goes inside of you and it has cleansed you. And the spirit that God has given you, it sanctifies you, sets you apart from the law of sin and death, and it prepares you. And that blood that Jesus shed for you, it purifies it. Your sins was forgiven. Now, so through the word, through the blood, and through the spirit, you have been prepared. You have been made prepared to meet him. Amen. And you know, so many people say, I know such and such made it. Oh, yeah, I know they made it. We don't know nothing. We don't have no heaven and hell to put nobody in. All we can do is give them the word. And they open up their heart and receive it in the word of a parent. Amen. Appreciate Sister Frances, you know, giving her granddaughter, bringing her in the truth, in the light of Jesus Christ and giving her the word. 
That's right. And, uh, you know, when our granddaughter was stripping away, you know, we prayed for her and prayed that God would give her, grant unto her that same preparation. Just like the man that was uh, on the cross with Jesus. He said, Lord, when you come into your paradise, he said, remember me. Jesus said, this day, you're going to be with me in paradise. This day, I tell you, I tell you right now, you're going to meet me on the other side. Didn't he? And this is how God bringing in a lot of our children, grandchildren, family members. I remember years ago, I never forgot it, how the man of God said that many were sitting with folks that get saved and get to heaven. Then they're, most of them ain't going to live for God. They're going to have to, on their deathbed, and when they heard somebody preach the message that whoever called on the name of the Lord would be saved. Huh? The real ones are, and even in these last days, the, the, those that do get saved, out of the eight or nine billion people in the world, God said He's going to bring one third through fire. And out of the nine billion, if three billion of them, man, that's a lot of people. If three billion of them call on the name of Jesus, then God promised them He would save them. Didn't He? And what were we reading at? Ephesians chapter 6. Now I want to just um, uncover a few of the um, things here in the scriptures to give you an understanding in the natural of what's going on in the spiritual realm. And I'm not going to go into a bunch of, of details on this. But Sister Francis just cheer up. You know, the word was put in it. That's right. It was put in it. And at the last minute, you and I are not to say this or that. When that word is put in it, boy, I tell you. You might read all kinds of magazines and books and Normal, but when that word goes in, that word is spirit and life. And that is what you're going to remember just before you meet the Lord. You know, God have mercy, that's what you remember. And we was praying, you know, when she was, uh, uh, when her, her granddaughter was passing out of this world into another, we was standing in the gap with the blood, with the word, with the name of Jesus, with the promise of God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And it's good to know God. A lot of people exit this world and never know God. And they never get that kind of opportunity. I never have nobody stand in the gap for them when they um, are suspended between this life and that one. You've got to have Intercessors. You got to have somebody standing in the gap for you. And that's what, uh, that's what Jesus meant, you know. Because nobody stood in the gap. But Sister Francis and I were standing in the gap. Wait a minute, Sister Francis. Hallelujah. And let's read here in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. Uh -huh. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Yes. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And I'm going to go into a lot of this in depth, um, hopefully this weekend. But right now, I just want to um, um, focus on just a little bit of it. Let's go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now listen to this. We wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. What saints? Flesh and blood. When you are going through things on your job and you feel like the boss is giving you a hard time, 
You know, always remember what I'm telling you. There's a spirit behind things. There's a spirit behind attitudes. There's a spirit behind words. There's a spirit behind mistreatment, abuse. Spirit behind alcoholism. People lighting, lighting up one cigarette after another. There's a spirit behind all this evil. Isn't it? And the Bible says we're not rational with what? Flesh and blood, but what? Principalities, powers, what? Come on, brother, take these great mind. Spiritual wickedness. That's what root. This is what is is behind every natural occurrence that happened, both in the um in, in the larger uh, picture of things and in the little bitty things. And let's finish reading a little bit more of that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. But against principalities. Against powers. Powers. Against the rulers of the darkness uh -huh. of this world. Now stop right there. Now let's go over to the book of Daniel chapter 10. Hold that. Don't lose that. Uh, let's go to the book of Daniel chapter 10. And let me see, I, I believe uh, we start reading. Yeah, verse 1 would be good. In the third year of Cyrus, uh -huh. king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. The thing was true, but the time was long. That, would, that it was to be fulfilled, it wasn't going to happen the next day. It, the time that it was to be fulfilled, here it is, 3,000 years later. 3,500, 3,000 years later. So when God revealed to Daniel, you know, I mean, in heaven, you got to understand, time don't exist. God. God is I am. He don't live in the past. He don't live in the future of the present. He lives right now. The past is God lives in it. The future, God lives in it. The present, God lives in it. And when you get to heaven, time ceases to exist. Well, anyway. <laughs> I don't want to go too deep into that. Go ahead and read a little more. But the time appointed was long. But the time appointed was long, but the, it ain't long no more. What Daniel saw is now upon us. Go ahead. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Yes. In those days, our Daniel was mourning three, four weeks. I was mourning three, four weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. Yes. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Uh -huh. Neither did I anoint myself at all. Till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Daniel said, I went into a consecration, fasting, and praying, seeking God, consecrated myself to Him for three or four weeks. Huh? Some people ask, him, Brother Blue, get your fans with this way or that, but it's different kinds of fans. You know, I have gone on fast without. Water and without food, but not for long. You can't go no more unless God divinely inspire and direct you. You can't go without water no more than three to seven days, because you could end up locking your your bowels. I've known people that go on fast without water and they die from it because they didn't use wisdom. They're serious, but it wasn't according to scripture or knowledge not scripture but knowledge my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge my people well anyway 
He goes on, and, and there's a fashion going, you know, silent. Flesh yourself out. And there's a fancy going with just pus. That's the kind that you went on. No pleasant food. Just, you know, a little. My wife and I used to we'd go on those, uh, and her mother would go on those pus, uh, pea soup. You remember when? In 21 days. And of course, there is a um, fashion could go on with just water, plain water. And you go three days, but you feel like you want to eat an elephant. Because your feeders are still awake. But after the third or fourth day, your feeders go to sleep. And you and you don't have an appetite for food. And, and, on, and on the fourth day, your body starts feeding up of itself. All that old waste fat and then waste food. Your body starts eating it up and and get rid of and that's why you feel so sick in your head because uh, all that poison is coming out your body. Your body is being purified. You're like an elephant that's going through his molten stage. You know what a molten stage is? It's when you go through a, a renewing El, I mean, uh, uh, eagle, that's what I'm saying. An eagle goes through a molten stage. He goes into a place and he begins to, um, he's old, he's about to die, he knows it, and he pulls out what feathers he's got, and he uh, takes up claws that he could grab and snatch food, snatch food out of the water out of the sea and he take them and he rub those claws until he don't have no way to uh, survive, to, to survive and his beak he just rub it against the rock until that beak falls off no hair, no, no feathers no beak, no and he there and he goes through a molten time and during that time, other eagles fly by him and they see what he's going through, what he's going through. And they said, I've been through that. And they go get a rabbit, throw it out there to him. Or they go get a squirrel and pitch it out there to him. Eat. And that's how these eagles go through their renewal stage, molting, molting stage. And then he gets, and then a period of time, he gets a new beak. Strong. He gets new claws. Strong. He gets new feathers. And pretty soon he becomes a new eagle. Like a young eagle again. Live another 30 or 40 years. And that's the secret. And if he repeats the process again, when he gets old, he can go on and, 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 and repeat it. That's what it means. When he says about renewing your strength like an eagle. You know, God's people get somewhere and just, like we're doing, waiting on God. Aren't we? Waiting upon the Lord. Finish reading. And this is what Daniel went into prayer, seeking God, and waiting upon him. Finish reading that. I ate no pleasant bread. He didn't say he didn't eat. He said he ate. He didn't eat no cinnamon rolls. <laughs> he didn't go and eat some hot glazed donuts. <laughs> I ate no pleasant bread. I didn't eat nothing that made me, that, that satisfied my flesh. I didn't eat nothing that satisfied my taste buds. When I did eat something, it wasn't to satisfy my lust for food. It was just to maintain strength while I could continue to seek God. Nothing pleasant, nothing satisfying of the flesh. 
So I said, what do you mean? Well, maybe just go and get one of them, get some uh, free crackers. I'm not talking about the kind that got salt in them. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about the kind that don't have no taste to them. Just a few of them. Now get your bowl full of them and just, just a few of them, just enough to kind of help you to get through that weakness. But anyway, go ahead, let's read a little bit more. I ain't no pleasant and, and, and sometimes people go on a, a juice fans. Just for a little juice. You know, uh, maybe a little apple juice. Uh, uh, some people go with just uh, uh, that uh, broth. That, you know that broth? Chicken broth. Just enough to give them strength to, to continue what they have to do. But you know, if it's three days, if it's seven days, God bless it. But maybe you're fasting, and uh, you know, there's, there's a type of fast you can go without. Lord, I'm going to turn this TV off during this whole seven days. I'm not going to uh, go into Facebook. Oh, oh, wait a minute, brother. That's a whole word saying. I'm not waiting to have Facebook. I remember we didn't, we didn't even have these beepers. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know what a beeper is. <laughs> but when we're just the, 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 the most effective kind of fast is when you just fast from any pleasant thing, any satisfying, anything that pleases, you know, in, in the flesh, in any kind of way. That time is, you have consecrated, you set it aside for God. And you're not giving no place for comfort for the flesh. Trying to help ease the time. Trying to help kill the time. No, God, you get all this time. But Daniel said, no, what did, what did he say? No pleasant food? I ain't no pleasant bread. I ain't no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I. And, and if you can go to a juice fast, man, I'll just go get a, a gallon of apple juice. <laughs> Try to drown out that. <laughs> Whatever craving you crave. You know, when you start fasting, you think about all kinds of foods. The devil will bring every kind of craving, every kind of desire to your mind. Because he knows that you are openly declaring that you need God. And when he sees that, he's going to try to attack you in that area. When he sees that, that you are openly declaring that you need help. Oh yeah, he'll fight you in every way he can. And even, you know, in your own marriage, you have to learn to, re to refrain yourself from your wife during that time. Or refrain yourself from your husband during that time. And refrain yourself. You can't sit there and watch those cowboys and be trying to fast too. Y'all see what I'm saying? You can't just waste your time away in things that pleasant, that have killed time. That time is for God. It's not just the fans that I've chosen. To loose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burden. To set the oppressed free. That you break every yoke. This is the kind of fasting. If it's just one day, let that day be dedicated to God. If it's three days, let the days be dedicated. Seven days. Something that you Bad, you, you, you're bad that you try to overcome and you can't seem to get the victory over God put me put it in my heart to fast it ain't going to do no good to fast if you're not praying it have to be a lot of prayer with it 
like I said, it was 24 hours, it was three days, seven days. If you get into the real spirit of it, some of you that's got a good strong healthy body get into the real spirit of it. God may need you to go seven days and you have no appetite. And you know what happens? You get strength you never had. And all your foggy mind clears up. Your mind becomes clean, very uh, keen. And your mind becomes very sensitive. And you'll find yourself able to get into prayer without struggling. You'll find those walls is being torn down. And you'll find yourself enter into a place in God. And you want to love. And, and, and you lose your desire for the natural things. You lose your desire for carnal things. And all you don't want to do is just get hungry and get closer to God and pray more. And you'll find yokes being broke off of spirits, love spirits, unclean spirits, all kinds of spirits are start breaking off of you. And that anointing, you enter into that anointing much quicker. You enter into a place where you're able to um, love people that you, there was a wall there. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, it, you, you start seeing God pull down strongholds. I ain't going to forgive. I ain't going to let go. I'm going to hold on. They ain't going to. You know what I'm saying? How we try to in our flesh. Try to justify our actions and our ways. Don't we? Oh, no, all of us are guilty of it. But this time, come by what? Praying. Fasting. Not running your mouth. Get somewhere and being quiet. Read your Bible. Lay aside these weights. That's what praying fasting does. It lay aside these weights. Things you can't lay aside on your own. Praying fasting help lay aside these things. Hallelujah. You find yourself praying for folks you didn't think you could pray for. Find yourself loving folks you didn't think you could love. See, because the, 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 the walls are coming down. All that, that old flesh, that flesh that tried to keep that old stubbornness, that old pride, that pride is coming down. That old stubbornness is coming down. That old heart spirit is being broken. Instead of avoiding people, you go, you, go, you, you, you go out of your way to speak to them. What happened? You become a new creature. You take it on new strength. It's not just the fast. Is that what he said in Isaiah 58? It's not just the fast that I've chosen. And we would go 21 days. Sometimes we would go 40 days. Amen. Sometimes 50. We did a lot of fasting. Standing in the gap for America, for revival, for the nations of the world, for families, for our churches, for areas to be blessed, for God to bring in loved ones. We want everything for nothing. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the blessings. Some people want God to really bless them. They don't want to, when God wake them up at 3 o'clock in the morning, look at them on 3 o'clock in the morning. See, it's a sacrifice to get up and deny yourself sleep for an hour. But God gets you up at, you go to bed at 10, got you up at 12 o'clock, pray for 30 minutes. You know? You think we're just going, that's a price to enter into a lot of these blessings that God wants to bring us into. We got people that, you know, grace. I thank God for the grace of God. It's not a works lest any man should boast, but through 
through faith, through faith, grace through faith. Grace through faith. Jesus paid the price. I understand that. I know that. But Jesus still said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you're not going to have this power. You're not going to have this life. Huh? Am I putting too much meat on, the, on what I'm giving you right now? If we ever want to break through these powers and principalities, then we're going to have to, if you deny your flesh, the power comes through the cross. And the cross teaches us something out. Don't it? I wonder why God will never bless me. I wonder why I can't ever get this. Maybe. He said, the day that you search for me with all your heart. That's the day you'll find me. Hebrews chapter 12. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. Land aside what? Every weight. And the sin. That so easily beset us. The sin that sets me back. May not be the sin that sets you back. My sin could be a pet sin. Your sin could be a pet sin. That we pamper and we pet. And think well ain't nothing wrong with this. But you can pray and see that God, you find out that thing becomes, that thing is a hindrance. Everything don't have to be a sin. It could be a pain, it could be a weight. A weight is, it don't have to be a sin. It can, you know, I mean, we could allow upsetness and get frustrated, quick to want to tell somebody off, quick to want to hear something. If we learn, lay aside all of this, we got to hear from God. We need some answers from heaven. And sometimes these little pet sins. I understand, you know, me being a pastor. I was indeed not many what? Masters or teachers, for they shall receive the what? Greater condemnation. Man, I tell you, uh, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm, I'm up here front, front row. I'm going to get bullets in every direction. And, uh, but I have to learn how to um, take them and, and not take it personal. Take what people say and misunderstand it. Some things I'm guilty of, some things I'm not. But I can't get up here and defend myself. I can't get up here and constantly justify myself. I have to do like Jesus. He opened out his mouth. You got to do like Jesus. A lot of things you got to take. Don't man. And go on. And don't try to dig it up. Don't try to justify it. Let's go on. Put it under the blood. That's what the blood is for. That's what the spirit is for. That's what the world is for. To help us to. Work out on our side. Now, all these things help us to work out our own salvation. I know we're saved through grace, but I'm not talking about that kind. I'm talking about learning how to keep your garment from being spied. Anyway, keep your dedication and keep your testimony effective. You're being watched by seven people at all times. I don't care where you're at. You're always being looked upon and watched. Every pop people watching what you hear, what you say, everything. You may not know it. You think sinners don't know the Bible. They may not read the Bible, but they read you. You are the Bible. You are the light of the world. And we can't, we can't be a stomach block to them. We've got to recognize that they're lost and they're in darkness. And we're the only example and light that they have. Is that right? Anyway, let's finish reading a little bit more then. I ain't no pleasant bread. I ain't no pleasant bread. Neither can flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither can flesh nor wine in my mouth. 
Neither did I anoint myself at all. I remember Sister Boogie used to just would eat popcorn. <laughs> you know, kind of don't have no nothing in it, just popcorn. Yes, a little bit. And I did, you know what I'm saying? By um, some people go on there vegetarian. Well, anyway, just uh, maybe fruit, maybe just an apple a day, or maybe just a, you know, a, a banana or something. Just something to kind of, but not overly indulge. Not take it beyond uh, just a little salad. Anybody want on a salad fast? And you went and got you a, a little big bowl or something. <laughs> and you put a little this in it. And put a little that in it. And a little bit of some more of this in it. You got you a good healthy salad. But what I'm telling you is we're going to have to learn how to sacrifice things that we can't have everything and expect to move God to. Sacrifice. Put yourself out of the way. It moves God. Go ahead, finish reading that. Neither did I anoint myself at all. Neither did I anoint now, neither, now you go home and brush your teeth. Get some Listerine. What I'm saying, wash your face. Comb your hair. That's what he's talking about. I, you know, I was just there. But, but I mean, we, we're facing the world out there and, and we have to keep our appearance decent, don't we? Go ahead. To three whole weeks. To three whole weeks. Was fulfilled. Was fulfilled. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedeku, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphas. His body also was like the burrow, and his face was and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. My God. I wonder who is that? Who do I think that is? Read Revelation 1 and 15. Let's, let's see if we see a similar um, comparison here. Revelation 1 and 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. Uh-huh. As if they burn in a furnace. Yes. And his voice is the sound of many waters. Uh-huh. Is that all of that? Yes. Let's see, that's comparison. That's the same one Daniel saw. Isn't it? Jesus. He appeared in the Old Testament. Just like he did in the New Testament and in the book of Revelation. Yes, sir. I am that, that I am. Go ahead, let's finish reading that. Uh, Daniel 10, I think he was at verse 6. Go to verse 7. Now Daniel alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption. And I, when you get a visitation of Jesus, uh, a visitation of a supernatural being, you know, you're not going to be puffing up your chest and thinking you this and that. You're going to have this same, you know, um, worthless thing. Uh-huh. And I retain no strength. 
Yet I heard the voice of his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face. And my face was toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. Fear not, let me listen to verse 12. Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself. From the first day you set your heart to understand. You have to set your heart to seek God. Yes. You can't just all of a sudden. Make up in your mind. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna see God. You know, you have to wait, and that's like we're doing now. Wait upon Him and calling on Him and searching our hearts. Set your heart to to pray. Set your heart that you're gonna enter into a, a dedication. Set your heart, and you know how you set your heart to go get something to eat. Or you set your heart on something in the natural that you want a car or this or that. Uh -uh. No, nobody told you out of it. You have to set your heart to seek God. You can't just, the devil is out there and he ain't going to just let you just seek God. It's got to, you got to set your heart. And you do that by waiting and praying and seeking Him. And He put it in you. And you become steadfast and unmovable. Set your heart that you're not going to uh, lose your dedication, that you're not going to lose your prayer life. That when you wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, you're going to get up. Set your heart. you got to have God. Can't just be something in your mind. It's got to be in your heart. God puts it in your heart to seek it. When you wait upon it, He puts it in your heart to be steadfast. He puts it in your heart that you're going to find it. But Jacob, Jacob rouses God and put it in Jacob's heart. You need to lift the answer right now. So, Lord, put it in my heart to seek you. Put it in my heart that I'm going to find you. That nothing is going to move me. Put it in my heart to come into the kind of prayer line, the kind of dedication, the kind of individual that I'm supposed to put it in my heart. The Lord, I'll brighten my tongue. Put it in my heart. can't do it by yourself. That's part of why we pray and see God. So His will can come forth. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Finish reading that. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart. Look at that. From the first day. What verse is that? Verse 12. Verse 12. From the first day that you set your heart to understand uh -huh. and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard. See, you chasing yourself before God. You humble yourself. You afflict yourself. You make that flesh behave itself. Don't you? Go ahead. Before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come for thy words. I come. If, it, if, if, if he said I heard you the first day, then why did it take him three weeks to get there? Finish reading. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia. See, Persia, I'm not going to go into this in depth, but y'all know what Persia is today? Iran. Persia is Iran. Y'all know what happened over there in um, Iran? What, what day was that? The devil. October the 7th. 30. October the 7th. 300 missiles sent to destroy Israel. Israel. 300 missiles. But they had an iron, that was an iron dome there to stop them. See, in the natural, we see this and that, but in the spiritual, there was war going on. That same prince of Persia, these demons don't die. That same prince of Persia has not risen up and tried to destroy Israel again, but but God had 
You know, in the natural, you see a uh, I don't, but in the spiritual realm, God's got angels up there blocking what the devil is trying to do. All we can see is the natural side, but there's a spiritual side we can't see. The natural always follows the spiritual. And if we a spiritual mind and in a place, we'll see that we're not rational with flesh and blood. Don't hold nothing against Brother Blue because he says something and not something you don't understand. It could be a spirit. Don't hold nothing against your brother or your sister. Pray. Pray. Have your prayers for is to put down all these strongholds. Cast down these what? These imaginations. The devil to get in our mind when you're praying and he'll he'll he'll. That's right. Your mind becomes nothing but a place. It'll be shooting marbles in your mind. You ain't got nothing in your mind to stop it. Nothing in your, your mind just constantly just going crazy. Like a bunch of uh, monkeys in a cage. Just going here and going there. Learn how to enter into this place and bring your thoughts under subjection and bring your spirit in oneness with his spirit where you can hear from him. Where he can commune with you. Fellowship with you. Finish reading that. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. See, he's talking about a demonic prince. Like America. There's a demonic prince that's in America. There's a demonic prince that's over, you know, our cities. China. There's a destroyer. Right. Trying to keep revivals out. Trying to bring in all kinds of drugs and everything else. Well, I'm not going to go into all of that, but let's re go read a little bit more. Prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me uh -huh. one in 20 days. It has to be a powerful prince to stand up against this angel for 21 days. Uh huh. Below. Below? Michael. Michael. One of the chief princes. One of the chief. These are the warrior angels. Michael. And he had a company, a great army with him. Warrior angels. Michael. Go ahead. Came to help me. Came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Uh-huh. Now I am come to make thee understand. I'm come to make you understand. What shall befall thy people. That my, my, what do you call them people that? Amas. I want you to understand that Amas is now being raised up to try to destroy Israel. Amas is coming to America. That evil prince, that evil spirit. Like I was telling you, it ain't just something God told me. It ain't just something that we're going to uh, see on the television that Israel, but it's going to, uh, it's going to attack you and me. Right now, what is it that's behind all these colleges, all this uprising? This is the evil principalities. These are powers. These, what is it that all of a sudden caused that LGBTQ to just rise up 2019 and just spread everywhere? It's this LGBTQ. What is it that the president right now is running his platform off to be reelected? Huh? Abortion. Trying to get you to see there is not flesh and blood, but there is evil that we're up against. And it's going to take prayer. Seeking God. You know, somebody was uh, saying that uh, the other day that uh, they were saying something about uh, how that kids, it's, it's, it's in the Bible, how that children, how that people put their children through the fire, sacrifice their kids to the fire, you know, abortion, a form of another form of abortion. And that's the platform that I'm, that Biden is running off of to give women their legal right to murder their babies. 
You think God's going to bless that? Man, I got scripture. I can, you better leave me alone. <laughs> I got scripture I can show you in my this is an antichrist spirit. This is evil. This is going to bring judgment on America like we've never seen. If we allow Biden to get back in there and he's up blasting Donald Trump because he took a portion out of and took the Supreme Court, put uh, good judges in there. That's what they're mad at. Man, people are mad as hell right now. Because they can't kill their babies. Somebody said, you shouldn't have said that word. Well, they're mad as hell because they can't kill and murder and shed innocent blood. I'll say it again. They can't shed the innocent blood. That's what they're mad about. Why are the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? against the Lord and against this Christ because they can't murder their babies. If it ain't hell, what is it? If it ain't hell that's inspiring them, that's leading them, that's trying to promote these things, what is it? That's right, brother. Well, I'm the But I go into some more of this. Did you finish reading? Finish reading then. Then I'll stop. Now I have come to make thee understand. See, that's what I mean. A preacher can't get up here. You know, you know, Brother Terrell, he's a prophet. Man, he say things. He don't care what anybody think about it. He tell you to go down himself if you don't want to hear that word from God. But I'm not a prophet. <laughs> I'm not a prophet. So I have to use wisdom as a pastor. But he said, the spiritual man is going mad. The prophet has become a fool. And the spiritual man is going mad. And he said, cry loud. Cry loud. Yeah. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their sin. In the house of Jacob, their transgression. We're going to see death and America like we've never seen if we allow Bible to do what he's trying to do now and bring back in this abortion. I'm stop. Did you finish reading? Hurry up, Brother James. Now I come to make thee understand. Now I come to make thee understand. What shall befall thy people? What verse is that? Verse 14, what should be for all thy people? In the latter days. In the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. Now we're in the latter days. Read the next three verses. And when he has spoken such words unto me, uh -huh. I set my face toward the ground. Yes. And I became dumb. Uh -huh. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me, Straightway, there remained no strength in me. Man, he went through, he saw such horror in his last days until he was just like a dead man. He saw such vicious things. Shit in his, all of these things he saw. And he's like a dead man. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us. Well, I feel your presence here tonight. I feel a very sober, strange presence here tonight. Oh, my God. Y'all feel this presence? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Bow your head. Close your eyes. Come on, brother. If you get that microphone. Pray with us. Let's pray and talk to God here for a minute, everybody. I feel something. And don't forget praying. Praying tomorrow night. Praying tomorrow night. Come on, let's talk to God here for a minute. Jesus, let's, let's pray for just a few moments. Thanks, God. We, we thank you. We, God, we can feel you reaching out to us, Lord. God, help us, Lord. God, we want to be as these men, Lord. God, you was the one that brought the understanding. You was the one that brought the breakthrough. You was the one that put the pieces together, Lord. God, help us, mighty God, Lord, to enter into that, my God, that place of consecration where, where the flesh is left behind and the spirit man takes over, Lord, and gives you an opportunity, Lord, to move, Lord, my God, to give us an understanding that we didn't have before. God, you, you're trying to lead us into that place, mighty God, where you can move, Lord. God, we've tried to do things in ourselves for years in the flesh. We have tried to do things in our mind, God. But God, if we can just get a hold to the Spirit, and we can just get a hold and get into the mind of the Spirit, God, and my God, and consecrate. God, things that we've tried to do for years, God, you can do it in a moment's time. Help us, Lord. Break up our fallow grounds. God, we can't do this on our own. Jesus. God, we can't do this on our own. We need this type of grace that has shined on these different men. God, to go forward, God, and Present their bodies, Lord, as a living sacrifice. God, holy and acceptable. God, help us tonight. Search our hearts, Lord. God, we want some of this. God, we want this to be introduced into our lives, Lord. God, we recognize, Lord, that it takes a touch from you, Lord. It takes that special grace from you. It takes, mighty God, that, that spirit that moves on the inside of us. Help us to just be yielded to it. God, in the name of Jesus, in the days to come, in the weeks to come, help us to walk softly where we too can tap into this power, where we too can tap into this consecration, where we too can, my God, present our bodies. God, Lord, and you can visit us, Lord, and you can, God, bring that spirit of understanding and skill and God, in that wisdom, Lord. God, we're so desperately needed now more than ever. God, Lord, God, the Prince of Persia withstood Daniel, Lord. God, it took, Lord, my God, Michael, Lord, it took, it took another angel, my God, to come on down, Lord. God, to break, Lord, the hold of that, that spirit had upon that place. But God, you shine through, Lord. God, help us to be as Daniel when he set his heart. He set his heart, Lord. God, it didn't matter what happened, Lord. He was not going to let go until he got the answer. God, put that inside of our hearts, Lord. Put something inside of us where we grab hold to you where we won't let go until the answer comes, Lord. Whether it be 21 days, Lord. Whether it be 7 days, mighty God. Whether it be my God, Lord, ten days, Lord. God, put it in us, Lord. God, to hold on to you. My God, to you move, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for stirring up our pure minds. We thank you for, God, I can feel you. You planted some seeds tonight. God, you put in something on the inside of us. Let it, God, let it take us over. Let it grow, Lord. Let it grow into a consecration, into a fasting, into a seeking Him. Where there's a partial, where there's a full, where there's my God, when, my God, just put something inside of us and let it take over, Lord. And let us yield to it. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Let's all stand up, hallelujah, as we change the order of the service. Um, you can bring your offerings. And um, there will be prayer tomorrow. From 6 to 7 and from 7 to 8. There will be prayer tomorrow. Prayer will be Thursday at 1 o'clock here at the church. Okay, the funeral will be Thursday. 